and say, can you just please try to not wake my children this night? Every single night, same houses, raid after raid after raid, and they'll just have to pick up, and it just happens again the next night. And this is how we're, we're forging a new relationship with the people of Iraq. This is how we're building hearts and minds in Iraq. Every town would go through, you know, the tanks would go in and, and shoot up the place, and then, you know, five, ten minutes later, um, you know, all the logistical support would drive through, and, uh, you know, to my left and right, it just, you know, I would just see, see bodies everywhere. Not many could be clearly identified as actual enemy combatants. You can see why the insurgency has grown, why when I invaded their country in 2003, there actually was no insurgency. It wasn't until I came back the next year that that had started. We faced resistance from conventional forces that the, chose to fight, um, but there, there was no organic resistance uh, when we first went. Everything we were told from the beginning uh, was a lie about about why we were there. We're, we're being told that um, you know weapons of mass destruction. We were incredibly concerned about you know chemical biological attacks. We had full full chem suits, gas masks. Right before we got to Baghdad, we're on the outskirts of the city, and all of a sudden they um, the report came down and they said Intel says you can take off your chemical equipment and. Granted, I mean, we were very happy to do so because, you know, this it was extremely hot to wear this on top of all your gear, and it was very cumbersome and uncomfortable. But here we are, you know, about to enter the lion's den of Baghdad, and they say, you can take it off. I mean, they knew. They knew there was no WMDs. And the fact is, it was getting too hot, and they were starting to have some real problems with heat casualties. Put away your equipment. Everything's okay. You know, it wasn't until... I got back and I started to do my own research and I realized, you want to talk about WMDs, you know, it was the damn munitions we were using. You know, my battalion was using depleted uranium. You know, I had depleted uranium rounds on my truck. And this stuff, you know, it's, it's a highly effective anti-armor weapon. It will penetrate anything. It's also highly toxic and it's highly radioactive. It's also completely useless in Iraq because Iraq has no armor. Iraq does not have tanks. And yet we are dumping this munition into their country as we speak four years into this occupation. You know, and this stuff is poisoning not only Iraq. When, when it hits its target, these particles instantly vaporize and go up into the atmosphere. They found depleted uranium particles on the skin of spacecraft. I mean, this is poisoning the globe. We do not have to use this material. You can use tungsten. It also penetrates armor. But tungsten is very expensive, and depleted uranium is free. It's a byproduct of nuclear waste. And we are using Iraq as a dumping ground to get rid of our nuclear waste. The VA refuses to admit it. Um, they refuse testing. I've tried to, you know, for two years now, I've been tried to, to be tested. And every day it's a different story. Say, no, well, we don't have the proper tests or it's not an issue. Come back tomorrow. This will absolutely be the Agent Orange of this war. We're supposed to operate under the Geneva Conventions, meaning you can only shoot people um, under certain conditions, they have to be carrying a weapon or wearing a uniform and be identified as an enemy combatant. Well, at this point, uh, the army had gone through the day before, and uh, they had said this town was secure. Well, when the Marines came through, um, we got hit really hard right off the bat. About 18 guys uh, died. And um, at that point, they just, they just ceased all operations and said, all right, Nobody else is going into this city until it's finally secured. Um, at that point, they pulled everyone back. We sat on the out outskirts of the city on the other side of the bridge to Nazaria. And that whole night, our tanks went in, and I listened to them raise this city. Um, tanks, watch the mortars fly overhead, um, gunships circling the whole night. What I drove through that next morning was just a mass graveyard. 
you know, we had to drive over human corpses the whole way through the city uh, just to get out. And um, because they declared that city weapons free, you know, you do not have to be carrying a weapon to be shot. And so they changed the rules of engagement and we went in and we shot everything that moved. And it's the same shit that was going on in Vietnam when they declared it, but they just called it a different name. They called it Free Fire Zones. That was an order given um, from our high command and uh, in direct violation of the Geneva Conventions. <laughs> There's an interesting pathology I found when we got back. Nobody, nobody talked about anything at that point. And for me, it was like, well, okay, if we don't want to talk about the moral and ethical dilemmas that we just, you know, found ourselves in, um, let's at least talk about like, uh, from, from a military, strategic, logistical point of view, you know, what just happened. Because I mean, even from from that frame of reference, um, a lot of things went wrong. Four years later, um, I've now finally met my salvation, um, Iraq Veterans Against the War. Uh, when I got out, it was, it was pretty rough. For about a year, I just tried to forget about this war. I even moved to Canada. I just was so irate at the United States foreign policy. Um, I felt I couldn't even live in my own country anymore. I did finally move back to the States, and when I did so, um, I instantly met um, a fellow veteran who turned me on to this group. There's definitely uh, been some war resistors and, um, and people refusing to fight and uh, people, you know, filing for conscientious objection and uh, people just going AWOL. I mean, there's 40,000 people that have gone AWOL in the United States and since the beginning of this war and that's a, that's a figure you'll never hear in the mainstream media. To realize that there was thousands of veterans all across the United States that felt the exact same way I did. Hundreds of veterans all over the country have realized that uh, this occupation is uh, not benefiting the troops and it's certainly not benefiting the people of Iraq. And uh, so we've been organizing. We have an absolute moral responsibility to speak to the true horrors of this war. Not only raise awareness, but to actively fight against it and bring an end to it. Um, <laughs> There's a movement starting. I mean, you know, I can't say that we're at the levels we, we saw in Vietnam, but um, are we on track to get there? Absolutely. It took four years to even, you know, get Vietnam on the radar for, for protests back in the States. And, um, and we actually, you know, historically speaking, are, are ahead of the game in that aspect. We're looking at, at the Vietnam experience and, and trying to take a page, uh, you know, directly from the history books. We really have shifted our focus to, to active duty service members and, and hoping to produce the movement that we saw in Vietnam with this, this mass level of resistance. The Democrats in America have absolutely betrayed us. They have no backbone whatsoever in standing up to this administration. In the end, the Democrats have, have done us a favor and uh, as they truly finally expose themselves. Maybe there's some hope in that, that America is really awakening to the fact that um, these people have betrayed them and they're not about ending the war. There is little difference, if any, between the, these two parties and um, they're not going to end the war. And um, yes, it took four years, but finally we're at a point where 70% of America is against this war. We're stepping up and recognizing that we need to take that public sentiment and turn it into something tangible. And looking outside of the political spectrum um, to directly speaking to active duty members. The Vietnam War, um, unlike the myth, did not end.